Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, how are you built for this time that we're in? What are your natural, let's call it inclinations? <laughs> how are you designed? And this is an ongoing series we did last week. We talked about our human designs. And now we're going to be talking about our cards that we're born to, that we're playing out, and we can't help it. So that's how we're built. And in order to appreciate how we're built, is to become familiar with our cards and understand each other and, and be more accepting of everyone's differences because we have different cards. And so to understand all this better, is our card expert who has a wonderful book called play your cards right and you can find out about your cards by going to his website lifeelevated.life so we welcome back to energy stew alexander dunlop alexander welcome thank you peter pleasure to be here always a pleasure to chat with you oh, i'm so glad that we could help people understand why they and the people they know are behaving the way they are. Yes, it's so helpful, that, as you said already, to have compassion for each other. And that's what I often hear when I'm doing, let's say, couple sessions and one person hears what the other person's cards are. Like, oh, no wonder he does that. Or, oh, no wonder that's how she is. And then it helps us to see each other with new eyes and uh, appreciate each other, have compassion for each other. Right. And uh, I know also from my family how everybody is playing their cards and they're all different from mine. <laughs> so, but not everybody knows about the cards. Right. And so when we do, and we know why things are the way they are, it doesn't necessarily help the people who don't know why they are, where they are. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then they question us, you know, um, our limitations because we can't be more than our cards. Mm. We, can, we can condition ourselves and, and, and do better. You know, my wife is always trying to get me to be a better two of clubs because I'm not, a, I'm a four of clubs, but how can it be a better two of clubs? But at least I can watch her and say, oh, I'll try to be better like you. Well, I think what it is, Peter, and maybe this is what you mean anyway, there is a high side to each of our cards to play. And we're talking, of course, about the deck of 52 cards the quote unquote regular playing cards, this ancient knowledge, the sacred geometry of our lives hidden in plain sight. And there is a high side to each card. And when you're playing the high side of your four of clubs, you would actually have this, you'd give your wife the safety and the security that she's really looking for in her two of clubs. Good. So <laughs> I have to tell her that. <laughs> well, that's what your gift in the four of clubs is that you make people feel safe with your knowledge and your clarity. Right. And my desire, you know, to know better. That's all. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's fascinating to me how, how, because I've learned so much over these recent years about our cards and watch people and, understanding them better through their behaviors hmm. uh, on the plus and minus side. So I think today we, what we want to do is look at how life is, is pushing us to manifest our cards or manifest ourselves mm -hmm. to be the best we can mm -hmm. and understand ourselves better. Well, we're certainly faced with a crisis slash opportunity to do that, as the old Chinese proverb goes, may you live in interesting times. And we certainly find ourselves in unprecedented times. 
And what happens when the familiar markers go away and the familiar routine goes away is that who we are really shows up. We don't have those boundaries and barricades in place in our life anymore. So those familiar points of reference are gone and then who we are really spills forth. And yeah, so it's, it's even very... more, more helpful to know our patterning in this time, to know how we're going to respond and show up. Right. Very, it's very smart. Very important that we're, we're seeing ourselves much more bare. <laughs> yeah. Stripped down. We've yeah. been stripped away. And now we get to look at ourselves. Right. So let's talk about some cards. Yeah. Um, let's start with aces. Sure. So, so what we're talking about is what happens when you're confronted with a crisis situation in your life. What's your, let's call it knee jerk reaction to a situation as it confronts you. And again, your cards are determined mathematically by your birth date. So they're set in our life. And if you're born on a certain day, then you would be born as an ace, as you're saying, Peter. And aces are always looking to prove themselves, to prove that they can master it, that they can rise to the challenge. They want to be self-reliant. I got this. I can do this. But if they don't think that they can or they don't think that they could master it, they will feel utterly worthless and shrink back in defeat. So it's a very all or nothing. Either I'm going to ace it or I feel totally worthless and useless. But also an ace is the beginning of the deck. And yes. so a lot of these people can be saved by coming up with new ideas, having new mm -hmm. impact in different mm -hmm. ways, uh, depending on if they're an ace of clubs and they come up with new ideas. That's right. If they're an ace of hearts, they come up with new relationships and new ways of working with others. Mm -hmm. And um, if they're an ace of diamonds, they invent new things. Yes, a, a new physical solution. An ace of spades is an, a new revelation, new right. consciousness. Well, if we do it like this, then this will work better for us. Right. And yes, absolutely. You're absolutely right, Peter, that the aces are looking to generate a new idea or a new solution. Um, but the problem is they may feel this burden or they may feel like it's all up to me. I have to figure this out. I don't have anyone who I can count on. I don't have anyone who I can rely on. It's all on me to do this. So they become originators and that's aces for you. Yeah. So they might feel burdened by it, but they're here to have that power. Well, they are. And let's say this too, that aces would not be as troubled by this quarantine because aces are okay being alone. In fact, a lot of aces like being alone. They prefer it. Interesting. It's, a it's a solitary energy. And yet, if you're an ace of hearts, you want to build relationships. They do, but they're also comfortable in their own presence. Good. Right. An ace. <laughs> they're, they're comfortable one. with themselves. I mean, Usually. One. Right. Yeah. Right. They, they, have, they keep the company of one. Right. Whereas if you're born as a two, this quarantine could be really challenging for you because your life is your relationships, your interconnection. So for your wife, Debbie, it might be particularly challenging that she can't connect with people the way she would typically want to. Oh, she's going all out on the internet, right. on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's looking for connection. She's connecting all day long with people. And so these are the people who are building Zoom and making Zoom what it is and Skype and anything else they can use to connect right now because that's what twos are about is how do we connect together. Right. And, and two of clubs wants to share their ideas with others. Mm -hmm. Connect their ideas. Mm -hmm. Two of hearts want to share their hearts with others. Yes. Two of diamonds just want to share everything they, they have. Um, share the practical things of life right. and share financial solutions. Good. That's yeah. smart. And the two of spades. Is sharing a vision. 
What's our dream that we can do together? What do we imagine together that we can do together? That's great. Now let's come up to another, a more difficult number actually. Hmm. Uh, it's a three because it stirs the pot more. Yeah. Yeah, the three um, can get probably the most overwhelmed of any number. Yes, they the take most, on too much. And there's the most variety, as most possibility. Which way do we go? What is the pathway? And for threes, they're all, they need to learn how to find their own true north. But there can be so much white noise and so much distraction and overwhelm that it can be challenging for them to march to the beat of their own drum. They, they join the distraction all the time. They're, they're, yeah. they're actually seeking it out because they're just, they're jugglers. They're used to yeah. juggling. They don't know who they'd be without juggling. Right. So they get lost in that. Um, let's, let's think together, Peter, what would a, how would a three feel about being quarantined? Not enough they, action. They'd, they'd feel stifled. Yeah. Yeah. They'd feel really stifled and yeah. They need you because, yeah, you're right. They need that variety and that stimulation. Right. And so the three of clubs just wants to stimulate their minds with others more. Mm -hmm. You know, they're more group oriented. Although three of clubs can be uh, writers. So this would be if you're listening and you're born to play a three of clubs, now's a great time for you to write that novel. Yeah, and it would be a complex novel too, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the Three of Hearts just really wants to have as many people in their lives as they can. Yeah, emotional connection, sexual connection. Right. And the Three of Diamonds wants to share a lot and, just, you know, just that more. Well, they're, they're physically creative and they want, they're tactile and, you know, spatially oriented, good spatial relations. Right. And the three of spades. Well, they're downloading consciousness. They can be artists, musicians, healers. They're right. channels of consciousness. And busily so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's come up to the fours. Fours like being at home. Not a big deal. Let me just enjoy yeah. my home. I'll enjoy my sanctuary. I'm a four, and I'm basking in in being in my sanctuary. Yeah, I don't feel a need to give it up. Although I I I like to be out in the world, but not as much as most people. Yeah, need to be fours. It's represented as a box in the sacred geometry, and it's enjoying your box, enjoying your structure, enjoying your organization. Right. And I'm a four of clubs, so I really like to have things figured out yeah. as much as possible. What's the, what's the truth? What's, what can right. I depend on? Yeah. You like to organize your mind and organize the ideas. Right. I love that. And then um, four, four of hearts yeah. is the relationships. We want to have organized, structured relationships. Yeah, could be or a family. Diamonds. You want to make sure yeah. everything's in the family is in order. So for a four of hearts, that could be challenging right now. If you have extended family that you're not living with, that could put a lot of tension on your four of hearts energy, wanting to make everyone in your family safe and secure. Yeah. If they're not in your home with you, that could be challenging. Yeah. Interesting. And the four of diamonds is organizing what matters most, organizing our financial structures, our health structures. Right. Um, everything in their place. Everything in its right place. Yeah. And the four of spades? Four of spades is organizing what we believe and what we do. It's organizing, again, our consciousness. And interestingly, though, four of spades tend to be very busy because they like to have action. They like to be doing things. Well, the universe is infinite. And, <laughs> yeah. and so they can climb into that infinite and try to make sense of it. Absolutely. That's a good way to put it. Um, so the four spades, it could be that they're comfortable in their meditative Zen state, or they're chomping at the bit to get out there and do things. Wow. 
Okay, good. Now let's talk about fives, because fives wow. might be the most uncomfortable. Yeah, might be, and, and they do not like the four walls. Get me out. Yeah, yeah, very difficult. Um, well, they're the adventurers and the explorers. Yeah. So this is really going to be challenging for anyone who's born to play a five. Although I have a couple of five of diamonds in my family and they're doing fine. They're finding other creative projects. My daughter, five of diamonds. Um, she's doing photo albums. She's cleaning out her closet. Um, yeah, but good. she's having a really hard time with the homeschooling and she doesn't like looking at a computer every day. That's not, she wants to interact. She wants to be in the classroom setting. And, yeah, more, more. Yeah. She wants bigger, better, more. Well, it was stimulation and connection, not just learning in front of a computer screen. Right. So, and so the, so the five of clubs wants more knowledge. More knowledge. Yeah. yeah. And the five of uh, hearts, more relationships. More people. Yeah, more, more people. Yeah. And the, Five of diamonds, uh, more, more things. More things, forever shopping. Yeah, yeah, right. And the five of space just wants to expand more in the universe. More of it all, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So let's jump up to the sixes. Sixes uh, are trying to make everyone else obey the quarantine. Sixes are trying to make sure that everyone follows the rules. Right, right. Everything has to be correct. It's a very Buddhist number mm. in that if you do everything correctly, you get your nirvana. <laughs> so they're very clear. They don't think that way. No, I mean, they think that way, but they don't think about being Buddhist, but they definitely act that way. And, um, and so they, they want to make sure everything is the truth. Um, I have a six in my family, six of clubs, and everything has to be clearly truthful, well-researched, make sure, as you say, follow the rules. Yeah. Everything has to be quite exact. And sixes would be really upset to see other people not following the rules or not acknowledging or obeying social distancing things like that right so it really irks them if other people don't follow the rules right very clear so six of clubs is all about how smart you can be about that um six of hearts would be making sure all the re relationships are mm -hmm. functioning correctly well, and being caring for all the people, but also caretaking them and like taking on that burden on yourself. Like it's up to me to make everyone right and happy, yeah. you know, and yeah, that's, and that's good <laughs> to an extent, but all sixes can be controlling if they're not right. aware of it. Right. Very fussy. Yeah. And the six of diamonds is very fussy about having everything in correct order. Yeah, finances, health, your house, everything should be aligned. Right. And the six of spades, what is that going to be like? Six of spades is um, they can get really cynical about life because in their imagination and in their dream, everything is perfect and clear and true. And then they look out at the messy reality that is our world and it can be terribly upsetting to them that right. our messy world never seems to line up with their crystal clear vision of what it could be. I think so far, you know, we've gone through a lot of numbers and we've gone through each suit, but we don't have a lot of time left. So let's just do the numbers and people will know from the experience of how we're talking about each suit, okay. how they can relate to the numbers. Okay. So let's look at the sevens. Well, the seven is a flip-flop. It's up or down. So um, people with the seven energy, they could find themselves like, oh, this is fine. It doesn't, doesn't bother me. I can go along with it. And then boom, they flip down into feeling the despair and the doom and the gloom. Right. So it's really a magical number and, and it can take you into good magic or dark magic. 
And sure. it's up to you as a seven to play it as you want the re good results or not. <laughs> Right. Well, and be aware of the flip flop because sevens get upset at themselves that they're flip flopping. They try to be like sixes where everything is straight. Right. And I right. always they, tell sevens to accept the fact that you go up and down. They have to be very responsible for their energies. So let's talk about eights. So the eight is this en energy, the eight, and, and they infinite. can be very infinite power, but then they can try to control everything and constrict everything. And, um, I've been talking to people born to play in eight energy and they find themselves trying to juggle everything and I'm going to control everything and I'm going to go to work. I'm going to take care of the kids. I'm going to get the shopping and I'm going to do the health thing and, and everything. I'm going to hold it all yeah, together. An extreme desire to be successful. And they can get frazzled by all the effort of trying to hold it all together. Right. So, um, and then the nines, you're nine, right? Mine is the nine of hearts. And so nine's transcending the situation or f falling down into the pit of hell. And in the first week uh, that this really hit, I, it knocked me off my game and I was surprised. I was exhausted. I just was tired all day and I felt really energetically down. And again, it caught me by surprise, but the nine can go all the way down. And I consciously work to lift myself back up. Yeah. Nine is, I, I think of it as an aspiration number. You aspire to have as much as you can of whatever situation you're in. To so, make the most of it, to do it yes. to the nines, to really exactly. suck the marrow. Do it to the, the nines. Like do it to the nines. That's great. Do it to the nines. So, um, so but either, it works either way. Like we go down in the nines and we suck the marrow of all the pity and the woe is me or we go all the way up to the transcendence. Right. So let's look at the tens. The tens, like the fives, may be having a really hard time now because the tens are social butterflies. They like to disperse and connect. And um, so this could be challenging for tens that are forced to be contained. They extend themselves a great deal. They do. Right. But they also need to learn how to be in their own solitude. So this would be a really great opportunity for tens to practice being in their own solitude. Right. Tens can get overwhelmed by totally the, the responsibilities they take on. Yeah. And then the jacks. So the jacks are the generators in a similar way to the aces to generate ideas and generate solutions. Um, so it'll be Jacks who come up with the new insights for us about how we can best confront this situation. Right. You know, it's the Jacks who can put their thinking caps on right now and come up with answers. Jacks are explorers and experimenters. <laughs> yes. I'm a Jack also. So I, I, uh, do you feel, Peter, do you feel like this crisis is stimulating your Jack energy yes, to come very up much with so. ideas? Very much so, yes. Yeah. I, love that. I love that. I want to help explore and experiment with opportunities. Right, right. So the, the, uh, yeah, the queens. Then the queens, like the sixes, being fussy, trying to make everything perfect. and try, But at the same time, the queen is an advocate and nurturing energy. And so they're trying right. to nurture all the people in their life. But at the same time, try to make everything perfect and straight and true. Well, cause they, they're responsible for their queendom <laughs> right and they're responsible for the people in their tribe they feel responsible anyway right exactly well it's a big responsibility to yeah. be the queen and uh and yet they want to nurture as much as possible but they want to be able to be successful at it yeah right um, and then the king is here to chart the course um to be the the one who says we're going this way and this is the law, and this is the way, and this is the truth, and this is the life. And so we need good leadership right now. Yeah, and they take on a lot of responsibility. They're willing to. They really want mm -hmm. to own their kingdom mm -hmm. and, and be good for it. So now's the time for kings to step up and show their leadership, show their authority, because we yeah. need good leadership right now. I, I, that's... And, and we'll get it from them too. Because yes, your kings are ready. Yeah, that's great. 
So we're almost near the end of the show. We've really zipped through these last cards, but I, I think people will have a good, solid understanding, basic understanding of what we're talking about. And they can find out so much more by going to lifeelevated.life. You can even find your own cards there. Right. And yeah, if you don't know your cards, you go to lifeelevated.life and you can look up your cards. You'll find out your birth card. And so you can re relate to what we're talking about here based on right. what your card is. Right. Uh, can they get cards of their family there? You can also. You can look up cards in your family as well. This is a free lookup tool. It's part of the mission of the nonprofit organization that I started. That's wonderful. Alexander Dunlop, you know, it's such a gift to talk with you and, and you have such a you know, profound understanding of the nature of, of life because the cards are the window to life. I, yeah, thank you. I believe so. I, these are the fundamental patterns of our reality. And as you say, we're all playing them out all the time, whether we realize it or not. Right. And the more we can get familiar, not only with our own cards, but those immediately around us, the more we appreciate why we are the way we are yes and the more we know how to play our cards right right and there we have a hand of cards so it's not just our, right. our birth card but is also a, a ruling card which is a personality card yeah but there's so many there's a hand of cards that yes. uh, are playing out including shadow cards etc that it's yes. good to know about well, exactly. And this is, I detail this in my book, Play Your Cards Right, A Sacred Guide to Life on Earth. I lay out the 13 cards in the life path and give you the interpretations for each of them. That's wonderful. So yeah, you can see all the different aspects of your cards to play. That's great. Alexander Dunlop, it's so great to have you back on Energy Stew and talk Thank you, about Peter. And, and this it's a is- a pleasure. Oh, yeah. thank you. This is Peter Roth your host of Energy Stew at PRN.FM. I can be reached at peter at heartriver, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. I'd love to hear from you and thanks so much for listening.